Meanwhile, Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell painting, painting that is, a sunny picture of the U.S. economy in a semi-annual testimony to Congress yesterday. Anthony Chan, chief economist at Chase, joins us now. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning. Uh, so his words, I think they're fascinating. Several years of strong jobs, low inflation ahead. Wow, sounds very optimistic. Are you as optimistic about the economy? I certainly am uh, over the next 12 to 18 months because we have a very tight labor market and people are concerned about uh, overheating. At this point, uh, some of the research that I've done finds that we're getting people outside of the labor force and bringing them into the labor force. And that's one of the reasons why the Federal Reserve doesn't yeah. have to worry so much about wage pressures. And that's, that's very good news indeed. I want to turn, though, to the broader conversation about the impact of tariffs on the economy and what the Federal Reserve might make of that. But starting today with the breaking news of this $5 billion fine against Google set by the EU. This is a record number. As you know, EU-U.S. relations really at a low right now. Uh, what do you make of this, and could it make the issue of tariffs even worse? Well, I, we know for a fact that uh, if you have a tariff war, that would not be good for the global economy. The International Monetary Fund has estimated that it could uh, potentially shave off as much as a half a percent off global economic growth if mm. we were to have a full-out uh, trade war. Our base case is that we're not going to have uh, an, an, an all-out uh, trade war, and therefore we're not going to have to worry about that worst-case scenario. But it certainly is out there, and, and we're going to see uh, countries potentially even use non-tariff uh, uh, wow. uh, methods in order to That's what to this retaliate. looks like, right? This is like $5 billion straight in the pockets of the EU. They already got $2.8 billion from Google. But look, moving on, I want you to hear directly from Jay Powell, the man himself, what he had to say about this issue. Listen. In general, countries that have remained open to trade that haven't erected barriers, including tariffs, have grown faster, they've had higher incomes, higher productivity, and co countries that have, uh, you know, gone in a more protectionist direction have, have done worse. I think that's the empirical result. Do you agree with that, Anthony? Well, I think most economists will tell you that a world without tariffs and without barriers is a lot better. And you could even make the argument that the president uh, is striving for that. One of the things that the president has said very clearly is that he prefers a world with no tariffs. So, again, a lot of this may be part of a negotiation mm. to bring us closer to that uh, state. But, you know, what it is, it's, it's the middle ground, right, between getting to the new trade policy and leaving the old trade policy. Today, we're getting an auto trade group saying that the cost of a foreign car in this country Country is going up $5,800. That's inflation, and that's bad news for consumers. What do you say? Well, there's no question uh, that if you have uh, auto tariffs in this country, it's going to hurt Main Street America. But remember, those tariffs have not uh, come to fruition. And in fact, uh, it leads me to believe that that's just part of a negotiation. And at the end of the day, mm. uh, we're, we're not going to see those things, but we're going to see less barriers. Fascinating analysis. Anthony Chan, thanks for that. My pleasure.